Hello and welcome to the final episode, number 73 of the Pilgrim Way, a Football Manager 2022 series here on Boston United FM. We took Boston United up from Conference North to the Premier League and winning the title in our final season, using a management model more common across Europe than in the depths of English football, where our director of football controlled our transfers and contracts. Professor Jonathan Van Tam was our technical director, providing his medical expertise. We have holidayed through one season just to see who the Boss United board appointed to replace me and check if they could retain the Premier League title. Brian Cristante is now the manager, with Chinese superstar striker Xiong Wang the club captain. Checking at the top of the screen shows the Pilgrims have actually finished in 17th place in the Premier League just avoiding relegation to the Championship. Four points was the cushion ahead of Burnley, Leicester City and Norwich City, despite losing 22 of the 38 games. Only 39 goals scored means that the strikers didn't have a great season between them. We'll check some statistics shortly. Tottenham Hotspur regained their league title as they were the previous winners before us last season. Something obviously went disastrously wrong. I wonder how many of the club's superstars were sold off either last summer or during the January transfer window. Looking at the very end of our final season and there were two big sales from our midfield. Amar Busu was sold for a bargain £34 million to Spurs after eight years at the club and over 200 Premier League appearances. Also departing was Aleja Rios, for an initial £69 million to Manchester City. Mainly a rotation player in the league, he played a lot of games for us in cup competitions, as well as in Europe. For the transfers after those two, the club pretty much broke even, spending £87 million and bringing in 86. Continuing with the outgoings in order of the largest transfer fee first, the club sold attacking midfielder Mauricio Moreno at the end of January for £36.5 million. He was in and out of the side during our final season. Left back Alexander Tasso went to AC Milan for £24 million and young American striker Theo White was sold to Aston Villa for £14.25 million without playing a single game for us. A decent profit on a free transfer. Two more left backs departed in Felipe and youth team graduate Adnan Claridge for a combined £8.3 million to Sunderland and Fulham. All other sales were for less than a million pounds each. The first signing for the club after we departed was Brazilian midfielder Eva Hilton for £41 million from Fulham after five years in West London. Niall Morris, a right winger or wing back, cost £22.5 million from Wolves a couple of years after leaving Manchester City for a similar fee. Another right sided player joined with Ibrahim Husik signing from Young Boys for £13 million. The winger had spent his whole career there and is a Serbian international. Coming in from Manchester City was Scottish international midfielder Clark Rendell for £10 million. An uninspiring set of transfers with the big loss in Busuf, but that shouldn't have been enough to slip the club all the way down to 17th position. Marcello Gagliardo was entrusted with the manager's job not long after I left, but he only lasted 154 days before getting the sack, presumably for a poor start. The current manager, Cristante, took over in December. The latter half of the season shows a beacon of hope as the club did at least reach the Europa League final, losing to Aston Villa. They knocked out Manchester United in the semi-finals. We'll now go forward another four seasons and pick up with BUFC five years on after we left the club. The good news is that the club is still a Premier League club in 2044. Plus, Xiong Wang is still the captain. He must be on a fair few goals for Boston now. Still in the new stadium with the 29,000 capacity that we had, with season tickets at over £1,000 now. Looking at the most recent season, a vast improvement on where we looked last. The Pilgrims are back in Europe with a sixth place finish. West Brom are the surprising champions. Going back a season, it was a mid-table finish, 
with West Brom champions again. Just missed out on European qualification the season before, finishing eighth. Arsenal won the league ahead of Tottenham very comfortably. The season after the programmes had only just avoided relegation, improvement was seen with an 11th place finish. With us leaving the club as Premier League champions, it's disappointing to see they've got nowhere near repeating it since. Brian Cristante was the manager when we last looked, after Marcello Gagliardo was sacked. Cristante was also sacked just under a year into the job and replaced by Marco Rose. Rose lasted longer before leaving of his own accord after just under two years in the job, and since then Julian Stefan has been working his magic to get the club back into Europe. A quick look at any big signings or sales. Striker NSK Mas was sold to Bayern Munich for an initial £75 million in July 2040. Someone who showed a lot of promise in our final season, up front with Wang. Philippe Pascual, a left winger, was brought in from Juventus for £30 million. The headline of 2041-42 was the sale of homegrown midfielder Luis Enrique Jimenez for £80 million to Paris Saint-Germain. We had accepted a bid of £99 million in our final season due to a release clause. However, Jimenez decided to accept a new contract instead. He finally goes after almost 10 years with the club. A couple of big signings in English defender Ronnie Kirkpatrick from West Ham for £30.5 million and Spanish goalkeeper Armando Munoz from Real Sociedad for just under that figure. In 2042, some of the players signed after we left are being sold on for big money. But fullback Pal Victor went to Wolves for £32.5 million. He was our reserve right back in our final season. Three players were signed for more than £25 million each, with a total of over £130 million going in and out of the club. And the latest set of transfers which enabled the club to jump up to sixth place. Just one purchase, a Victor Spring a midfielder from Leeds United for £33.5 million. The big sale was F.I. Eelton, who was bought after we left for £58 million to Real Madrid. The current squad, five years on after our retirement, and the two first-team goalkeepers are still there, Leotzi and Ocaña. Buffon and Jensen also remain at the back, but it looks like Matondo is leaving at the age of 33. Divayo is now 31 but still bagging assists. And up front, both Ledesma and Wang are banging in the goals. Enrique Ledesma has now been with Boston United for 12 seasons, but you wouldn't class him as a superstar due to his goal record. He's hit double figures for Premier League goals only seven times, but has done that in the last three. A total of 355 league appearances, 120 goals, and 30 assists in there too. Someone more consistent with goal scoring is now club captain Ji Yong Wang, who we signed for our final two seasons for almost £50 million. He replaced our homegrown wonder kid Richard Spence in the summer of 2037. After his fantastic first season with us, he's still yet to get close to scoring 28 league goals in a season, but does hit double figures every year. 113 league goals for the Pilgrims so far in 218 appearances. Talking of Spence, here's his career so far. Just two years after he left us on a release clause transfer of £82 million to West Brom, he went to Arsenal for even more money, just under £100 million, after 28 goals in two years. He seems to have struggled in North London, though, scoring just 33 goals in 157 games. He scored more for us as a teenager, with 39 in 89. A fitting screen to end the series on has to be the club's overall best 11. Gabriel Liuzzi was a regular for three seasons, but lost his place to Gaston Acagna. However, it's Liuzzi who gets the nod, with Acagna on the bench. Liuzzi did play a few more games for the club, though. Across the back four, we have Dimitri Matondo, Alex Ashworth, a former club captain who came with us from League One to the Premier League, Alejandro Fontana and Lasse Jensen. Interesting to see Jensen pushed out to left back as we only played him there in an emergency. Only Ashworth of those players didn't make over 200 appearances. 
with this being a 4-4-2 formation, there are two wingers included. Ibrahim Husik on the right, signed the summer we departed, and Matt Wicks on the left. Wicks came in back in 2026 as seemingly a backup option, but forced his way into the side. Less than 100 appearances each, you can tell that we didn't play with wingers in the final years of our career at Boston. In the middle, Julian Rodriguez is partnered by Luis Enrique Jimenez. Rodriguez joined us in 2033 and left on a free transfer to Atletico Madrid a year ago. He was a fantastic goal scorer and assist machine from central midfield. A bargain at £6 million, making over 300 appearances in all competitions. An even bigger bargain was Jimenez, who came through our youth system graduating in 2032. 198 league appearances later, he moved to PSG for £80 million, as we found out earlier. He fitted in nicely at the base of our midfield diamond. Up front, we have the stars of past and present. Timmy Abraham came to the club while we were still in non-league in 2024. He is still the club's record scorer with 156 league goals in 253 appearances. He shot us all the way up to the Premier League, but couldn't quite manage to score at the top level. Jiong Wang, as we checked before, came in to replace Richard Spence in 2037 and is still with the club, 113 league goals later. Now club captain, he's a star for club and country, with 94 caps and 79 goals for China. It has been a fantastic journey up from Conference North and playing the Champions League, even winning the Premier League in our final playthrough season. Not having any control over transfers is difficult, but relying on the knowledge and judgment of a perfect director of football makes it a little more trusting as a process. Incidentally, I did check and Mr Transfer Genius is still with the club five years on as director of football, but technical director Professor Jonathan Van Tam left the club at some point, seemingly to retire. Keep an eye on the channel for further Let's Play series and other football manager videos. If you've enjoyed the content of this video, please don't forget to leave a like. And for more videos, please subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.